In an earlier lecture, we spoke about two types of physical quantities. We mentioned that there are quantities that have both magnitude as well as direction. And there are also quantities that only have magnitude. Now, physical quantities that describe the motion of our objects, such as displacement and velocity, have both magnitude as well as direction, and these quantities are known as vectors. So let's suppose we have a moving car that moves from initial point A at 0 meters along the x-axis to a final point B 50 meters away from our initial point, and the object, our car, is moving in the positive direction along the x-axis to the right. So let's describe displacement and velocity. So displacement of the object is given by the following value. So we have a positive in front of our 50. So the 50 represents the magnitude and our direction is given by this sign. So positive simply means our object is moving along one direction along the x-axis to the right. What about velocity? Well, velocity is also a vector, so that means we have displacement or we have our magnitude, so that's 33 meters per second, for example, and our direction is also given by the sign. Since our velocity is towards the right, that means we have a positive sign. Now, just like displacement, velocity is given by the following symbol with an arrowhead on top. So both of these quantities, the symbols have arrowheads on top. The arrowhead simply means that our physical quantity is a vector. It has both magnitude as well as direction. Now, vectors are represented on the x-y axis using arrows. The arrow simply represents what the vector is and in which direction it points. So, for example, let's say the blue uh, arrow represents our velocity. Now, the direction is given by the direction of the arrow and our magnitude is given by the length of the arrow. So, because our velocity is it's uh, constant, that means that our arrow, the length of the arrow, is exactly the same at point A and point B. So once again, the magnitude of the vector is represented by the length of the arrow, while direction is represented by where the arrow actually points to. So let's look at another example. Let's suppose we have two moving objects. One moving object is moving in the positive direction along the x-axis and a second object is moving in the negative direction. So, notice that this is moving with twice as much speed as this. So our velocity for object 1 should point in this direction and is given by the following arrow. Now, this will point in the opposite direction and because it has twice it's, it has twice as less velocity, magnitude of velocity, compared to this one, that means the arrow is twice as short. Now, let's talk about the other type of physical quantities that only have magnitude and no direction. So, other physical quantities that describe our motion of the object, such as time and distance, do not have direction. So, whenever we specify the time that has elapsed, we never specify direction of the time because time really has one direction. It only increases. So, let's look at the following uh, example. Let's suppose a person walks from point A to point B 10 meters away. So, our point A and B are 10 meters apart. Now, what time has elapsed? When the, uh, when the person moved from point A to point B. So let's say it took the person 10 seconds to go from point A to point B. What about our distance? Well, we said our distance is 10 meters. So distance is given by just our magnitude. So none of these quantities have direction, and so these are scalars. 
and notice that our displacement is given by a lowercase d and so is distance. So how are we to differentiate between our distance and displacement? Well, we have to look at the arrow symbol. If we have an arrowhead on top of our D, that means we're dealing with displacement. If we only have the D with no arrowhead, that means we're dealing with distance, a scalar value. So let's look at the following five examples and let's determine which one of these is a scalar and which one of these is a vector. Now, Temperature. Well, temperature only really has magnitude. We never specify our direction of temperature. So we never say it's 80 degrees pointing upward or downward. We only give the magnitude. So that means temperature, like time and distance, is a scalar. What about force? Well, we never really spoke about force, but think of it this way. Whenever I apply a force, I push an object, for example, to the right, I have to specify I'm pushing it to the right. It's not the same thing as I'm pushing the object to the left. There is a difference in direction, and so that means force, like velocity and displacement, is also a vector. What about acceleration? Well, acceleration is defined as taking the derivative of our velocity function. So because velocity is a vector and our acceleration has velocity in its formula, that means acceleration too is a vector. So for example, if our object is moving in this direction and it's accelerating in the same direction, we say our car is speeding up. Both have the same direction. What about if acceleration is in the opposite direction of velocity? So in that case, we say our car is slowing down because our vectors point in the opposite direction. What about speed and mass? Well, speed is defined as the distance traveled divided by the time elapsed. Both the distance and time are scalar quantities. So that means that speed is also a scalar quantity. Speed only has uh, magnitude. So, in fact, speed is represented by the symbol V without the arrowhead on top, just like distance is given by the symbol D without the arrowhead on top. What about mass? Well, mass, just like speed and temperature and time and distance, is a scalar. Whenever we specify the mass of an object, we specify it with only a number and no direction, just like we specify the temperature.